Are we all eating genetically modified beef from genetically modified cows? The answer will probably surprise you. See, I recently did a video that I actually got quite a bit of pushback from to where, you know, at doing the carnivore diet for going on almost a year and a half now, um, I started incorporating fruit back into my diet. And a lot of people come on and say, oh, you know what, the fruit's bred for, you know, the higher sweetness, more fructose, all this stuff. It's sprayed with all this nonsense. The answer is, yeah, you, you, you're right. It works for me, so I'm gonna eat it. That's the way it goes, okay? I'm not, and I'm not gonna feel sorry about it at all. See, you gotta watch out with stuff like this, okay? Because this can get a little bit almost cultish. And if you're gonna talk about how we're eating genetically modified fruit, all the fruit's genetically modified, because guess what? A banana didn't look like a banana like it did, you know, a couple hundred years ago. What, a banana was probably this big that was bred for, and to make it bigger, bigger, and bigger, okay? Uh, apple, I'll show you about apples and peaches and pears and all that stuff in a little bit. But if you wanna stay away from genetically modified stuff, you really need to know what you're eating and the answer is probably gonna surprise you. One of the main foods, probably the best food to eat on the carnivore diet is beef. Now, I'm a big proponent of it. I think you should eat as much beef as you can. I think there's a big difference in quality of beefs too that I wanna to talk to you about. Now, where does beef come from? It comes from cattle, right? We all know this. But what probably a lot of you didn't know is that cows are number one, not native to North America, and two, actually, ready for this one? Not native to Earth either. Did you know that a cow, any kind of cow, was made by humans? It's not natural. You won't find a cow just out grazing, out in nature. It wasn't created by nature. It was created by humans. So the answer is yes. Every single piece of beef that you eat, is it genetically modified? The answer is a resounding yes. Why? Because we took an animal that wasn't a cow and we turned it into a cow. See cows, they're mostly from, from Europe and a little bit like in Asia, India area, okay? There's actually two different types uh, of cow. There's Boz Taurus and Boz, shoot, I'm skipping the name on it. I'll put it down in the description. Indicus or Indus or something like that, okay? Boz Taurus comes from the, the, the real name, okay? Comes from Europe. What are the names of some of those breeds? Uh, Angus, uh, Shorthorn, uh, Holstein, uh, Hereford. A lot of the standard ones. Now, the other set of cows, I know two of them off the top of my head, Brahmas and Zebus. It's a different type of, that's a different whole species of cow. It's a whole different animal, but they're able to crossbreed and they're still considered cattle. Zebus and Brahmas are found in India. They're the ones with the big floppy ears and they have like a big hump on their back. Okay. But even those genetically modified. See how cows came to be is back when we were in caveman days, we're going around and we saw this thing, this, this grass eating animal called an auroch. Yeah, an auroch. Have you ever heard of it? No. Have you ever seen one? No. Why? Because they're extinct now. See, caveman was able to go figure out how to domesticate this auroch. Now, I'm sure the first way they did it was pick out the ones with the temperament that's the friendliest. Okay, so they don't kill them. What does an auroch look like? Okay, I'm gonna put a picture of it right here. Okay, of what most people think it looked like because they've been extinct for a long, 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 long time. Okay, now, funny enough, uh, take a look at that auroch and take a look at what I got out there. That's probably the closest thing to it possible. So, they, 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 I'm sure this is how they did it because this is how I would have I done it. They're gonna go and domesticate the ones that are the friendliest. And we're gonna, we're gonna see, okay, you know what? Each cow, each auroch has their own personality. Each bison, each animal has their own personality, really, okay? Even chickens. So they found the ones that were friendly. They figured out how to cut down trees and, and put it in, in a fence, and they were able to give it treats and grass and whatever, okay? However they did it, they did it. But after they got like their little herd set up, they started thinking, okay, we can breed this one with this one because guess what? Having, it's gonna get bigger. It's gonna get, it, this one tastes better than the other one. This one uh, acts a little bit better. This one has more babies than the other one, okay? It, it, it's faster, whatever. So over the course of a few hundred years, thousands of years, I don't know how long it's been, we're able to go and breed this, these auroch genes out to create this new animal a cow, cattle. Now, how different is a cattle from an auroch? Well, at first glance, they might look the same, but you look at how the cows today were bred. Okay, what it, how, you gotta think. Number one, where's the money with it, okay? 
how do ranchers get paid? They get paid by the pound. When And the way it's normally done, there's cow-calf operations out here. Uh, there's a few different operations. Cow-calf operations, we're just gonna go with that one. Okay, so they, the cow has a calf and the rancher takes the calf to the sale barn and sells it. How is it sold? By the pound. The more it weighs, the more money it's gonna get. So that's why there's been all these different breeds. There's probably almost 100 different breeds of cattle, probably more, somebody's gonna correct me on that. There's a lot of them. You know, Santa Gertrudis, there's Longhorns, there's Shorthorns, there's uh, Angus, there's Charlays, there's Herefords, there's uh, Brahmas, there's Limousine, there's Belted Galways, there's Red Belted Galways, there's Holsteins, there's Jerseys, there's all this other stuff, okay? So there's a, a, a bunch of them. And they're bred for specific purposes. Jerseys and Holsteins, those are bred for milk. They're very skinny, they don't have a lot of meat on them, they're bred because that's what people use to, that's what people use as milk cows. So those cows are genetically modified by humans by selective breeding to where, you know, now you can even AI stuff and that's a lot of, if you get Jersey milk, most of them are AI because the Jersey bulls are crazy. Like they're literally nuts. I don't care how long you've had it, they're loco. But they've been genetically bred to produce more milk. Now, does a Holstein give a lot more milk than, say, a Longhorn? Absolutely. You can get, I think it's two to four gallons a day off of a Holstein. A Longhorn, they produce enough just for their calf. That's the way it works. Now, if you look at, like, the fat ratio, okay, you can get real fatty cuts of beef now off of Angus because one of what they're fed now, which is a lot of corn and soybeans and a whole bunch of genetically modified stuff that you get at the grocery store if it's not grass-fed, grass-finished like these, um, you're gonna get into a whole world, another world of stuff. It's funny enough, you can go say corn. Corn was taken from, it's funny enough, corn was done the same way. Say this was a little piece of, say this was grainy. I don't have another piece of grass to show you, okay? Because corn is technically a grass. Um, some of these might be bigger, some, some of the leaves might be bigger. They, they were able to go and breed this to where it started growing bigger, 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 and next thing you know, we're getting corn kernels rather than little tiny seeds. And that's how corn came to be. Same way with the fruits and vegetables. S exact same way. But then just, uh, you know, 50 years ago or whatever it is, Monsanto got their, you know, claws in it and we're now they're doing all kinds of stuff in a, in a lab and making it grow bigger and, you know, some, it won't die when Roundup hits it and all this stuff. So, yeah, that's what, if you get beef at the grocery store, that's what you're eating. And so, technically, it's genetically modified two ways because cows not supposed to eat corn or soybeans. They're supposed to eat grass. Secondly, the, the stuff, the corn and soybeans that they're putting in their body, oh, that's all GMO. Uh, it's ridiculous. And thirdly, they were bred to put on a lot more fat. Aurochs, okay, the original cow, what was not genetically modified, averaged probably around 7% fat. Now, you can go get, you know, 25%, 30% fat ground beef. You go and ground up an Auroch back, way back then, it's probably only 7% fat it's a lot more protein. So the, the, the fat to ratio is different. When you, you look at store-bought beef, that's why grass-fed is so much better for you because the omega-3 to omega-6 you know, acids completely off. In grass-fed, grass-finished beef, it's balanced. So yeah, everything is genetically modified. Let me show you, we'll go over to one of my fruit trees and I'm gonna show you how that was done to explain the kind of, it's, exact, it's the exact same process basically. So this right here is one of my peach trees that have grown in the orchard that I'm creating, okay? This right here, it hasn't started to flower out yet. It's it's almost budding out, but it's growing down here. I have to clean this up down here to help promote the fruit growing up this way. Now, I don't remember what type of peach this is, but it's some sort of peach tree. That's just all I know. Say it's XYZ peach, name it whatever you want, blah, 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 okay? Just for purposes right now, we'll call it XYZ peach. That's what's gonna come off of this when it fruits out, okay? Down here, there's a lot of growth, right? These are little peach trees that are shooting up. As you can see, they're coming down from the root, okay, down here. All the way down here, these are coming from up from the root. I can actually cut this right here, put some rooting hormone on it, probably plant it, and it'll grow, 70% of them will grow up into a peach tree. Now, why don't I do that? Well, I could, I could, but if I just did that, planted it right there, and let it grow up naturally, as naturally as it could, is it gonna produce a peach um, that's edible? Odds are, we're talking 98%, we'll go 98% to be a little bit generous. It will turn out, it'll grow up into a peach tree with a peach that tastes like garbage. Why? Because the way that 
that these peaches are done, the way these apples are done, it's the way a lot, most fruit probably is done, is that there's a, there's root stock. What you wanna do is take one of these, cut it off, plant it, okay? Once it starts getting established, you take a cutting off of, say right here, okay? And there's something called graphing. You can graft it on to the, the established little peach tree. Now what that does is that Okay, this shows that they can grow here pretty well, right? Because it's obviously growing up. It'll establish itself, but when that peach tree grows up, it's gonna have a terrible fruit. So you cut, you cut it off, and the top part is XYZ peach, which is gonna give a really good tasting fruit. So technically, are these bred for sweetness? Yeah, okay? When you think about a Honeycrisp apple, how was a Honeycrisp apple developed? When apples were wild up in like the Northeast or whatever, you, people went around tasting, oh, this is an apple, I'm gonna bite it. Oh, this one doesn't taste good, that's why. There's crab apples, by the way, okay? We're gonna throw that one away, don't like that. Oh, taste this one, no, it's no good. Taste this one, eh, it's better, but still no good. Grab what would be a Honeycrisp apple, you'd bite into it and you go, whoa, that's really good. So that tree, that Honeycrisp apple tree, all Honeycrisp apples came from like one or two trees, okay? They cut little parts off the Honeycrisp apple tree like you would here, take it to a crab apple tree, graft it on, next thing you know, a Honeycrisp apple tree is growing up and that's where you go get your Honeycrisp apples. It's the same thing with XYZ peach. I can go cut all these off, go plant them all here, okay? And once they get established, chop them, chop them down, graft on something from a good tasting peach and guess what that's how you get good tasting peaches so yeah are they genetically modified yes were they were they bred to taste better yeah because who wants to taste who wants to eat crap apples who wants to eat crappy peaches nobody i think it's like one out of ten thousand or something like that could be wrong it's something astronomical about a, uh, an apple that tastes good so you know the apple seeds that are, you take you can get out of apples if you plant that guess what it's not gonna be the same variety of apple. It might be close because it's a parent, but odds are it's gonna be a crappy tasting apple. But every once in a great while, every once in a great while, guess what? One grows up that's really good, and that's a new variety of apple. That's how Granny Smith apples were, 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 were discovered. That's how the Gala apples were discovered. That's how um, the yellow apples, the whatever, you the Cosmic Crisp now that's that's out there. That one I think is a little bit more genetically modified to be honest with you, but, but that's how apples were bred. That's how apples were created. That's how we can go find something that usually doesn't taste very good, find one that does, be able to take cuttings off of them, next thing you know you have tons of, of fruit tree that tastes great. Now is there a lot of stuff that's sprayed on it? Yeah, unfortunately because that's a whole nother video. Um, that's why I'm gonna grow an orchard out here so I don't have to spray that stuff and I can have a big variety of fruit. You'll never find a monoculture in nature. That's why cornfields are stupid. That's why, uh, you know, uh, an apple orchard where it's just pure apples are stupid. Um, that's why you have to spray stuff on there. But that's a whole nother video that, that I'll do when I finish planting out this orchard and show you how I'm gonna get around having to spray a whole bunch of chemicals and stuff on it. So really, the, all the food that we eat, doesn't matter if it's beef, doesn't matter if it's apples, it doesn't matter if it's tomatoes, because it was all done the same way. So it, yeah, guess what? Every, all the food we eat is genetically modified, unless, unless you wanna go out there hunting and go get a deer and make sure you didn't bait it with any corn, then that's gonna be something natural. You wanna go hunt bunnies, guess what? That'll be natural. If you wanna go pick wild berries, that's fine too, go for it. But I'm probably gonna go pick 300 pounds of blackberries across the street in a couple months. And all of that, very wild, and I'm gonna get stuck a whole bunch of times. So what am I gonna do when I plant blackberries here? I'm not gonna go get the, the blackberries, from, the wild blackberries from across the street. I'm gonna go find thornless blackberries that I can go have grow up here and not stick me all over the place. It's convenient, it's better, for, better that way, and I'm not gonna get all cut up. So yeah, is that gonna be a genetically modified blackberry? Yeah, could I go across the street and get it? Go, could I go across the street and pick the ones with the thorns? Yeah, but it's not very fun. And I have to wear our big old Carhartt canvas leather, you know, jacket to where I don't get stuck. Sometimes genetically modified is better. For the most part, it's not. But for us to eat beef, and hopefully you get the best quality that you can, um, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all, and it's healthy for us. So before I get a whole bunch of arrows shot at me for eating fruit, understand that the food that we eat it's all genetically modified 
in some way, shape, or form. Why do you think that I raise Longhorns? Because it's as close to the Auroch as you can possibly get. The way that the Longhorn came to be is they came over on Christopher Columbus's second voyage, okay? He came with a couple cows from Spain um, that had little tiny horns that, you know, would go out. And uh, when they have them go graze, they're the first, they're the first cows that, uh, that came to North America, actually. But some of those cows got out and they went just roaming all across the continent. See, and see in Texas, we had something called the Lobo Wolf which would eat cows and the cows that got out that were able to survive had longer horns so just by natural selection because the the wolves or the bears yeah we had bears in texas at one point too would come and try and eat the cows but the they wouldn't mess with the ones with the the longer horns they'd go after ones with the shorter horns that didn't have weapons on them the, the cows with longer horns started to breed and the horns started to get longer, longer, and longer, and longer. So the longhorn was created by nature. That's why they have the long horns. The longer the horns, the better they could survive. So that's kind of my way to be able to eat as natural as possible. To take something that nature gave to us and that other ranchers really don't like because hey, you know what, to go through a, a cattle shoot, it's really difficult with the horns. To be able to go eat grain and stuff uh, in a feedlot, they have to go through, they can't have the horns. To, so to take a cow that is the least touched by nature, that's created by Texas, hence the name Texas Longhorns, they're in the right environment for them to thrive. But guess what, those are still technically genetically modified because they came from domesticated aurochs and the cattle breed was, and the cattle species was created.